Okay, perfect. Let's move on to the next. So at this point, we are exploring ideas of representing sentences and documents. One might say, why don't you have vector representations for your sentences and documents the same way that you had vector representations for your words? Why don't you do that? So to know the answer to that, watch this video, but I can uh, tell you about the drawbacks. We learned about word vector representations. We know that one of the algorithms that we covered was the bag of words or continuous bag of words. Uh, context was in, and then you are predicting perhaps the word in the middle or one of the words in your sentence. Maybe you're just predicting the next word. Whatever that you do, you're gonna end up with word representations. Can you extend that idea to have paragraph representations? You can go in your training data, you say, this is my paragraph number one, paragraph number two, paragraph number three, or this is my sentence number one, sem sentence number two. And we are turning those IDs, that's our entire objective, to vectors. We did the same thing here. These are IDs. There is a word in our dictionary. It has an ID. Think of it as student ID. It has an ID. You can turn it into a vector. Same thing here for each paragraph in your training data, have a vector. And then once you are doing your training, you take your paragraph, the words in your paragraph, and then perhaps you are predicting a single word. Or you can actually go the reverse route. Given the paragraph, predict every single word. Given the paragraph ID, predict every single word in your sentence. This is perfectly fine. You're gonna turn your paragraph IDs into vectors. The model is flexible enough because per each data point, you have a vector and uh, you're gonna learn these vectors, no problem. When it comes to inference, when it comes to testing, you need to do some extra optimization. Why? Because that new sentence that you just saw is not part of your training data. You're gonna create an ID for that sentence and then you're gonna learn the corresponding vector. So at inference, there's gonna be some optimization going on. And this is the downside of this model. I think the rest of it I'm gonna cover next session for those of you who have questions are be around and for those of you who want to leave you can leave